Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson five of the simple series of my 68,000 assembly programming tutorials. In this series, we're going to be creating a bitmap, first a smiley face, and then our Chibico mascot. We're going to be doing this on the Genesis this week, and we're going to be doing it with the tile map. Now, um, this is kind of a bitmap sprite tutorial, but with regards to sprites on these tile sprite systems, it's a little bit tricky because there's limits and things. So we start off by just using the tile map to just draw a simple graphic on the screen. Now, the reason for this is my Grime 68000 example that I did a few years ago. Um, that only used tile maps, and it was a fun little game. And I think that's the kind of thing you should be aiming to start with. You know, or just something simple that does the job and so sprites are going to be a little bit more complex for you anyway let's go over to today's example and let's see it in action okay so here's the example we'll discuss the code in just a moment but first we'll fire it up and there's our first example just a simple smiley face that's an 8 by 8 single tile there and then the next example we're going to combine a bunch of tiles together to draw our Chibico character the mascot there it is so that's what we're going to be doing. Now, if you want to create valid tiles in the correct format for the Genesis yourself, uh, you can do that with my AcroSprite editor. There it is. So this is today's example. And if you go to 68000 and you go to, where is it? Uh, Mega Drive Genesis, save rule bitmap. That will do for today's example. You can see there's a Sprite option. That's for a different tutorial. So um, there we go. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to go through the code and we're just going to discuss each section of it and we'll learn what we have to do to get a graphic drawing on the screen. Okay, so first of all, we're defining our control ports here. The VDP control port is for sending data to select memory addresses and also to define the initial settings of the hardware. The VDP data port is for sending actual data to the video memory. Next, we've got a bunch of basically, these are kind of fixed values. These are the traps for the processor. This is the sort of header of the cartridge. So you shouldn't need to change these. You can just use these as is. You can see here, there's a link to the start of the program and just a dummy return interrupt handler just to disable all of these different traps here. You can see here, there's our header. We've got the um, some generic things. You shouldn't need to change these if you're using um, this template. Um, but as I say, it should just all be okay. Here's the actual start of our code here. So first of all, we've got this um, thing here. Now there's a thing called TMSS, which is a uh, it's a copy protection chip. Uh, I've got a sort of generic um, thing you can put in here to disable it, but if we're using an emulator, we shouldn't need to worry about that really anyway. What we do need to worry about though is the VDP. We need to turn on the graphics mode and we've got a bank of settings down here for this sort of um, generic screen that should work for us pretty well as a basic starting point. So we're sending these to the video hardware. Let's just have a look at the code doing that. Where is it? So we're sending words to the VDP hardware. The top byte is the VDP register number. The bottom byte is the value for that register and we're loading them all in from the VDP settings that we just saw. So this is just sending those VDP settings straight to the graphics hardware. So if you wanted to make a change to something, you know, if you wanted to change the addresses of the name tables, for example, you can do that just by changing these values here and the code will do that. Once we've set up the screen, we're then defining the palette here. You can see here, we're having to select the colors with this um, top word of this 32-bit uh, register here. So C000 is the, the base of the palette and then there's two bytes per palette entry. So color one is C002, quadruple zero here, and so on. And here are the colors. There's three bits per color. So there are the red bits, the green bits, and the blue bits. So you can see we're setting the background to blue. But if I change this to zero, got a black background. So there we go, that's pretty easy for us to change. We're just setting four colors in this example. Although it's a 16 color screen, we're only using four. We're then turning on the display here, just with this command that turns on the display. And next what we're doing is we're defining our tiles that we're going to use for the graphics. Now, the tile in the first example is just a single tile. We've got a bitmap, where is it? Here it is. Now, the, the data is in a linear format, so the high nibble of a byte is the left-hand pixel and the low nibble is the right-hand pixel, two pixels per byte, 16 colors, of course. And so you can see here, these are zero color pixels here. These are one color pixels. These threes are three color pixels. And these twos are two color pixels. The smiley face is in color two. The eyes are color three. And the face itself is in color one. OK, so that's our bitmap. And we're defining the bitmap with this function here. So what we're doing is we've got the bitmap address here we're loading in. We're defining the size of the bitmap. 
and the address we want the write to in VRAM with this command just here. Now each tile is 8 by 8 and there's 32 bytes per tile. So if we want to define tile 256, we do 256 times 32 and that's the memory address of that tile's data. And then we're using this define tiles function to just send that data to VRAM. And here's the define tiles function. And what we're doing is we're running this prepare VRAM function here. This is converting the address because the VRAM address that we want to write to, um, we calculated before, but we then need to convert that into the correct format for the hardware of the Genesis. And it's a little bit tricky, I think, basically, because it's maintaining backwards compatibility with the Sega Master System, which had a lot less memory. So it, it's a bit tricky, the format, but this will convert the address into the correct format for the Genesis's graphics. So this will select our VRAM address, and then we're just reading in the bytes from our bitmap here and then we're sending them to the VDP data port, repeating until we've sent all of the data. Okay, so that's how we're defining our tile. So we've now got our tile defined, and then the next thing we need to do is we actually need to set the tile to be visible on the screen. So what we're doing here is we're selecting our X and Y position here and our tile number. So we're putting it at 3, 3, and it's tile 256, because we selected that just here. We're then, again, calculating the X and Y position. The VRAM address is at C000, that's the tile map. Our tile map is 64 tiles wide and there's two bytes per tile. And so we're multiplying the X position by two, two bytes per tile, and the Y position by 64, 64 tiles per line, two bytes per tile. And then we're just multiplying all that up into a video RAM address. Once we've got the video RAM address, we send it to the control port to select that video RAM address. And then once we've done that, we just send the tile number in as a, a long as a two bytes to the data port. Now the other bits of the tile data can do things like flipping, but we don't need that for this simple example here. So that's the basic one, and the, the, principally the, the same is the case for this one. It's just a few slight differences. So here again, we're defining our tiles exactly the same as before, although this time we're importing from a bitmap file. Where is it? There it is. So you can see it's actually an MSX format. It's the same format for both. It's just linear data, one nibble per color. So very straightforward there. Um, so we're just loading in that, and then we're using this fill area with tiles command. Now each tile is only eight by eight pixels, and this is 48 by 48. So what we've done is we've broken it up into eight by eight tiles. This is done automatically by that exporter here. Where is it? There it is. So that's automatically splitting it up for us into the format we need. And then all we need to do is actually rebuild that image with this fill area with tiles command. And what we're doing here is we're specifying an X and Y position for the start, a width and a height, a starting tile number, tile number 256 here. And then we are just at the start here calculating the start of the line. And then we are selecting that with this. And then we're filling that line with consecutive tile numbers when we get to the end of a line, we move our Y coordinate along, recalculate the memory address again, and fill the tiles again, and so on, until we've completed our image. So that is drawing the image to the screen of the Chibico character. Now, of course, if we uh, did something a bit weird here, if we just change this to 257, for example, and run again. Well, you can see now the um, left-hand side has been moved along because we've started at the wrong position. And if we uh, just undo that, and if we change the width, to a different size. Well, you can see it's kind of become more garbled. And the reason for that is the fill area with tiles routine is putting the tiles in the same orientation as the exporter did. But anyway, as I say, with that, we can get our simple graphics onto the screen. You've seen how to get the screen turned on and how to define some tiles. And as I say, if you want to create your own tiles, you can do it in this way I did with the smiley face. Or if you want to, something to do it for you, you can use my Acro Sprite editor. So there we go. Well, that's pretty straightforward. That's all we're going to be covering it in this episode. I've already done another um, episode in the platform specifically. It's on the tile map, and I've done one on the sprites in the tile map as well. So if you want to see more on that kind of thing, please go and have a look for those. If you want to see more of this kind of content, please like and subscribe. We're going to be going a step further with this example later on. We're going to be adding joystick control to it, and we're going to move that smiley around the screen. So please stick around for that. And I'll be doing lots more Genesis content in the future as well. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this today, and I hope you'll enjoy programming the Genesis. Thanks for watching today, and goodbye.